Welcome to a fantastic edition of Rebellion's educational series. We're looking at leadership and focus with Navy SEAL Commander John McCaskill, who has left the SEALs and come to talk to us. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to, to have our conversation and see where this goes. Oh, yeah. No, the pleasure is all, all ours. So first, I, I see you served all over um, Iraq, off the coast of Somalia. Um, did you serve in a, a boat as well, or were you just a, a SEAL? Yeah, so um, I was enlisted brother. first. Uh, <laughs> most of my, my Navy brothers and sisters will appreciate that that change to ship instead of boat. But yeah, I apologize uh, about that. I was thinking no, you're going to kill me on that. So <laughs> no offense taken on my end. I mean, I did serve on both ships and boats, um, but primarily my, my work was done on the land. I uh, started as an enlisted sailor. Uh, did some time uh, working with jets and their ejection seats, and then got uh, a, an appointment and a nomination and a subsequent appointment to the Naval Academy and went from the Naval Academy into the SEAL teams. Can I interrupt um, you for a second? Sure. Um, sure. As a child, I was always obsessed with Die Hard 2 and the scene where he <laughs> ejects. Is that realistic or is that... If I remember correctly, he's ejecting from a C-130 just yes. before it explodes, right? Indeed. Um, that is outside of my uh, realm of knowledge. I don't know if they have ejection seats in the C-130s. I'm assuming so. But if but... it did, would it be able to go up high enough and would it conceivably <laughs> work? I, I don't know that. Yeah, uh, I would imagine not. I mean, that, if I remember correctly, the whole aircraft explodes right be below them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know that that would work because you don't think we, uh, we would need to submit that to um, Mythbusters and see. Yeah, seriously. No, without, without <laughs> um, so, you know, as a Navy SEAL commander, you, you must have been uh, well, rather, before we get to this, uh, you, know, you, you, you know, you worked with the ejection seats. And then how did you make the transition over to being a SEAL? Yeah, so let's see. Uh, I, I wanted to be a SEAL starting fairly early in my life, uh, relatively early in a way, like somewhere in uh, junior high or high school. High school is where it really firmed up. I was part of a fairly successful running team, cross, track and cross country team, but we were a very small team, very tight knit. And uh, I wanted to serve my country. And I also wanted to continue a brotherhood, some, you know, some team that I was a part of where we were very tight knit doing things together, doing just about everything together. And so special operations jumped out at me. And then I wanted to do something in or on the water. So of course, the Navy kind of jumped out at me and then the special operations community within the Navy, um, or at least special warfare within the Navy is the, the Navy SEALs. So I decided probably sophomore, junior year in high school, that's what I wanted to do. Um, wow, amazing then that determination I, I, that long. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't know if it's determination or obsessive compulsive, <laughs> but yeah, I, I decided that's what I wanted to do and um, tried to get into the Naval Academy out of high school, got turned down, decided, uh, well, I still wanted to be a SEAL, so I enlisted, but while I was uh, enlisted, got, got picked up for the Academy and then went that route uh, to, to the SEALs. Um, and then while I was in the SEALs, coming back to answer your, your first question about serving on a boat, I, I did serve on boats uh, and ships. Uh, I, I worked with the special boat teams. The special boat teams are made up of what are called SWCC, S -W -C -C, so Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewmen. And uh, they're, they're another uh, arm of the Naval Special Warfare community. And uh, so I served with, uh, with them and on their boats. They've got incredibly high speed boats with uh, great guns. And there are a lot are of- like the lateral, Are these the lateral ships that I've read about or? Uh, the, the littoral combat ships. Oh, no, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a little, uh, that's a different, different um, community. Um, one which I, I don't have, know a lot about, but- We did a the, show uh, on uh, littoral ships. Uh, we had uh, a Navy, uh, uh, director of the Toral ships come on and talk to us. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. very, very, very interesting stuff. Yeah. Amazing how fast they can go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these are even smaller. I mean, they're mm. truly boats. 
like, but they're uh, they're kind of like cigarette boats. I mean, just for uh, our mainstream viewers, you know, we, we have a ton of uh, military viewers, but for our mainstream viewers, what is the difference between a ship and a boat? <laughs> the I don't know if there's actually a definition, but the way that I've always put it is a ship can go on a boat. Uh, or sorry, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. A boat can go on a ship. A boat can go on a ship. Uh, so if you think about a ship lifting a boat and actually putting exactly. that on it, that's As opposed to being on a dry dock yeah. or something. Yeah, a, right. It's like a destroyer, of course, would be a ship. And yes, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very, very, very so these cool. are much smaller. The ones that I'm talking about uh, can get into a lot more places and take us, the SEALs, into a lot more places. But then they also do a lot of their own phenomenal work. The SWIC do, the Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewmen. Um, so that's where I have worked on boats, but I have also done some time on ships, though it was fairly limited. I've actually done more time on submarines than I have on ships. May I ask what ships you were on? Uh, they were not official Navy ships, <laughs> so okay. I'll just keep that off the gotcha. keep that off the record. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, had had some fun uh, serving in the maritime domain in in various capacities. Yeah, no, I, actually, I, I speaking of ships, I wanted to go down and visit the USS New Jersey the other weekend, but I, I couldn't convince my wife to do the drive. But uh, <laughs> so I'll be. Uh, no, I've just I, I've I've always had a huge. Uh, thing for the iowa class battleship it's uh mm -hmm. one of my yeah. uh you know machinery heroes if you will so yes for even, sure. though, it, uh, even though it was that it was late for its you know purpose in history of course you know the aircraft right. carrier obviously took off in the pacific war but, uh, right right definitely i i personally wish we still had the battleships just because they are so yes gargantuan uh, yes. and the guns that they had i mean they're just unbelievable but no they've uh, been been relegated to to mothball fleet and uh and they've been basically replaced by the aircraft on the aircraft carrier but in terms of just as a nuclear uh deterrence or you know a, a nuclear weapon mechanism you know, the submarine that's its main purpose is to carry nuclear uh, weapons around and be you know, threat deterrence but couldn't a battleship have done that as well and could we have loaded up the missouri with tons of nuclear weapons and just had to sail around you know kind of yeah uh, I, I imagine we could have um the the one nice thing about the submarine is that they're stealth nobody ideally nobody knows they're there uh so the the thought that there may be a submarine off your coast that is laden yeah. with nuclear weapons can sometimes be more scary than actually having uh, an aircraft uh, carrier, or not an aircraft carrier, sorry, a, uh, a submarine or a ship off your coast. So sometimes it's just the thought that is the scary part. Oh, no, definitely. That's, uh, that was one of the dramatic scenes in Run for the Red October when you know, the, uh, the, the sub captain who had, you know, been hit by a drunk driver, you know, says to, uh, you know, Jack Ryan, hey, this thing could park, you know, a couple of hundred warheads off of Washington and nobody know anything about it until it was all over. Right. So, right. Yeah. Pretty scary thought, right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely very, very scary thought. Um, you know, also uh, submarines. Uh, did you serve on attack class or nuclear? No, I, I was uh, I mean, they're they're all nuclear powered but as far as what they carry yeah, yeah I, I was um on on the fast attack and that i was only gotcha. on there for uh, you know a few few weeks at a time doing diving operations and primarily training um so yeah uh, I, I never got a chance to serve on any of the big boomers that that, that you see was diving one of your favorite parts of being a seal or was diving an issue for you uh, uh, I love it. That's that's actually was kind of my bread and bread bread and butter serving in the in the SEAL teams. Um, I was I uh, initially was in the SEAL delivery vehicle team, so the mini submersible, basically a very small submarine that you're diving in the whole time. You're wet as you're in it, but it's powered, so you can go you know long distances. I I volunteered to be part of the, that team. Uh, because I did love diving and I love that mission so much. So I love diving too. I'm Patty certified, yeah. done over 100 there dives. You go. But we had another Navy SEAL on who said that the diving aspect was the hardest part for him and the closest he ever came to considering quitting. And that <laughs> reminds me of the astronauts we've had on the show where we've had 
quite frankly, one astronaut say that every time he got on the shuttle, he almost you know broke his hand from nervousness. And then other astronauts who came on and said they loved it. They thought it was the coolest thing ever. They were never scared. Um, it's amazing. And the one who was nervous, he flew combat missions, over 100 combat missions in uh, Nam. And wow. uh, so I, the idea that he's more scared on a you know, shuttle than combat missions, nevertheless, uh, it's amazing two perspectives. Yeah. You can have on the same yeah. issue. Well, you've got, you know, the, the world is watching you when you're flying a shuttle or at least when it's when it's launching well, first how do you lead as, as a navy commander i mean can you be a leader underwater as while you're diving or not really is it you can yeah you can i mean i i, I wasn't so much uh leading as a commander underwater uh most of my time as a commander uh, as far as rank commander wow. i i did a, it was mostly administrative uh, very few leadership opportunities for me as as a commander in the Navy, but my leadership opportunities were much younger and earlier in my career. And then as I rose through the ranks, they ended up being more managerial. But the the leadership uh, underwater, you're you're in charge of your dive team, you're in charge of your your platoon underwater, or even while you're on the submarine, you're in charge of your SEAL team that's on that sub, and you are communicating with that SEAL, or sorry, with that submarine commander. Um, so that, you know there's leadership there, but then also just taking care of your people, uh, making sure that they have what they need. Maybe not necessarily underwater, but before we actually start a dive, making sure they what's have the what deepest? they need. What's the deepest dive you've ever done? Uh, I don't do a whole lot of deep dives. Um, I, the deepest dive I ever did was 130 feet, and that was what we call a bounce dive. And that's literally, and I'm sure you know what that is, but uh, for your listeners, that is literally just diving down to 130 feet for like a minute, not even, and then coming back up to experience what that narcosis feels like so that you, if you do get a nitrogen hit, then you know what's happening to your body. Uh, other than that, uh, most of my dives were you know, very shallow. You know, I won't, I won't go into the depths, but they were, they were very shallow. And did you dive directly off of the submarine or did it need to be up uh, at the surface? No, I dove directly off the submarine. We have the, the SEAL delivery vehicle has basically a big garage that sits on the back of the submarine called the dry deck shelter or DDS. Uh, that has a big door that opens on it. The seal delivery vehicle pulls into that and and then, uh, you know, basically parks and then it drains and then vice versa uh, as you go out and do work. That Did you ever have shelter. fear diving from the back of a submarine? Yeah, it's pretty intimidating uh, when you're on that on that thing and you look below this, the submarine and you know there's hundreds, perhaps even thousands of feet below of water below you. Uh, that's a little intimidating. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, I imagined, uh, very, very scary. Did you have any fear of heights at all? <laughs> Ironically, I do, I do have No, so many of the astronauts have fear of heights. Uh, you know, yeah. astronaut Nicole Stott, who has been to space like four times, actually she spent I think 100 days in space. She said she still gets scared on ski lifts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's actually uh, funny enough. I, I just went, I was in um, Breckenridge a few weeks ago skiing and uh, the ski lifts are, are uh, a little um, anxiety inducing for me mm -hmm. for two reasons. One, I'm not very good at skiing. So I always have anxiety about getting off the ski lift right at the top because I always uh, think that I'm going to fall. I don't fall, but I always think for some reason that I'm going to and I'm going to mess up the person next to me. And then also I have a little bit of anxiety because we like uh, my wife and I, for some reason, we don't pull the bar down to protect us. Um, so I have a little bit of anxiety thinking, hey, I'm, I'm going to fall from here and break a leg, but I haven't done that yet. <laughs> Let's knock on wood. <laughs> oh, well, uh, no, it, heights are something to be scared of. And my yeah. last astronaut mentioned was J.D. Weatherby said, I'm not scared of heights. I'm scared of what happens when I hit the ground. So. <laughs> It's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So fear, was that something you dealt with often? Did that affect your ability to be a leader? That's a great question. Um, 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that it affected my ability to be a leader. Um, I, I would say that managing fear could have affected my ability to be a leader if I didn't learn how to manage it. And, and did, wasn't uh, there a time where you had to skydive ever once where you just wanted to flinch or did you never and you just you went and skydiving uh, was as simple as eating a you know grilled cheese sandwich well uh, ironically i i am actually one of the few seals that is not free fall qualified um not because i failed out of free fall or anything i just never went to free fall training so i have parachuted uh i am what what we call the uh the um lead wings so I, I am static line qualified and I'm, so I'll, I'll parachute with a static line, but I've never done the skydiving. I, I have gone skydiving on my own, but never gone through the military free fall training. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, overcoming fear, standing in that door, at one point you just have to bite the bullet and say, you know what, I'm doing this. Yeah, at one point you, you kind of get past the point of no return and you, you can't turn back. Well, when you're standing in that door, you can't turn back. And you just- What realize, is the highest you ever have to jump by the way also? It was the altitude, did you get uh, trained for- Yeah, well, being that I, I was static line qualified only, the, you know, the highest I jumped was probably 1800 feet. Uh, it's, not, it's not very high. Yeah. Um, Whereas when you go to the, the free fall, you can jump from thousands of feet and you can even get into the high, uh, the halo jumps where you're actually jumping with oxygen because that affects the way that you think. It affects a lot of things. Um, well, what did that affect their, uh, the Navy's ability to deploy you, though, if you can't uh, or just because you could only be deployed by a submarine, so it didn't matter? Um, the the operations that I was on, I never jumped into an operation. Uh, and, and I was never even on, uh, I was never even part of an element that jumped into any of the operations. They were all helicopter insertions or vehicle insertions or just foot patrols. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it, there are actually far fewer uh, free fall insertions than one would imagine. Uh, and I'll just, I'll leave it at that, but there, there are, uh, much more helicopter and vehicle insertions than, than other. Did you ever work on your helicopter piloting skills ever? Or? <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, I, uh, I, I guess that that's, uh, obviously a, a sore point for the, uh, the Navy SEALs considering, that you know, the, obviously the, retro, the retribution uh, that occurred. Um, it's very scary work what you do. Uh, absolutely, the idea that you know you can wake up any day, and, you know, when you're deployed and deal with you know, possibly losing your life. You know, I guess what was your main technique for finding a strong mental place moving forward? My main technique uh, previously was prayer, and I still use, I still, still pray regularly, but I've also added into my toolbox the practices of practicing mindfulness and meditation, and that allows me to calm my mind, calm my nervous system, and get control of my body, um, and those I really didn't start implementing until later in my career. Uh, so I wish that I'd had those tools earlier, but initially my, my go-to was prayer and I knew I, my personal spiritual beliefs. I, I knew that uh, my higher being, my God, uh, I, I felt was going to be with me, you know, whether I, whether I was killed or not, whether I was hurt or not, I felt that my my higher power was with me to uh to make sure that whatever happened was for the best for me um and for my my team so that's that's what allowed me to to overcome fear when i needed it wow that's uh fantastic this has been absolutely fantastic conversation uh commander i really couldn't be uh you know, happier that you've uh, come on today you know now that we've Pleasure come to the conclusion of our episode. Is there anything you'd like to add to our viewers? You talk about what you're doing now, your, your, your firm. 
Yeah, sure. Now, as I, as I mentioned just briefly there for a second, the, the practices of mindfulness and meditation, I teach that uh, in the outside world, the civilian sector, to help improve performance, develop grit, develop resilience, and ultimately just allow people to live a happier and healthier life at work and at home. And I, I do that through my, my own firm or subcontracting under other uh, organizations. And, uh, and you can find out more about me at johnmccaskill.com forward slash links. That's where uh, I have a lot of the stuff that I'm doing and all my social media and my email is, is on that link. And your favorite military movie? <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, that's a great question. There's so many. I think um, we were soldiers once and young. Oh. Oh, uh, actually, that I yet. think that's the title of the book. The I think the title of the movie is just "We Were Soldiers." Uh, the the title that. of the book is "We Were Soldiers Once and Young." It's an excellent, excellent movie. Mine are Glory and Patton. So mm, yeah, I, I haven't seen Patton. Uh, oh, Patton's Glory, amazing! Glory. It's four Glory hours. Is phenomenal. And no, Pat, uh, Patton's life changing. I've seen it like five yeah. times. I Glory. love Patton. Glory is excellent as well. And yeah. the, you know, the very last scene when they're mounting the assault on the floor. I've watched it a hundred times. Chill, chill the box. background, the music. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, me as well. The, Fantastic. The chills are, are without a doubt felt and the passion is there and you just want them to win. And then you realize that it's just impossible. Um, right. And, and Denzel is, I think that's one of Denzel's first, like really good movies. If not, yeah. if not his first. So my okay. wife thinks everything he's ever done is perfect. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Denzel fan too. So I may agree, <laughs> but I've got to say we had George uh, Patton's grandson on and he actually thought the movie was very realistic. He enjoyed it. And that's also general Petraeus is uh, one of his favorite movies. So oh, really? I, I love it too. It's, right. it's long. It's a little slow, you know, you know, drink it with some snacks and hang out, but it's, 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 I think it's over four hours. So, yeah. you know, it's not going to be like Let's the departed with Leonardo DiCaprio. It's not going to bank. You <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, you know, this commander, this was uh, fantastic. And Thank uh, you. I hope we uh, stay Thanks in touch. Time. And, um, yeah, definitely. Please be well during these crazy times. Amen to that. Well, thanks very much for your time. I appreciate it. Go Navy. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely.